هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصوم ومن كان مريضا او على سبب الى اخر الايه الله عز وجل سيد شهر رمضان اصمام رمضان قران واس ريفيلد So we understand this is a special month. Not just a month that we're fasting, of course that is also special, but the Quran was revealed in this month. So there's something special about this month. This month is described as a month, or we can understand it as a month of mercy, rahma, rahma from Allah Azza wa Jal. Our whole worship and our lives revolves about around the mercy of Allah. Why do we pray? Why do we make dua? Why are we good? Why are we Muslim? Why do we say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah? Why? So we can be under the mercy of Allah. What is the mercy? What is the ultimate mercy of Allah that we are away from? Jahannam, and we enter paradise, Jahannam. And this month, the subject of this month is is Rahman. Now, let's understand why is this month Rahman, mercy. Number one, this month is known for fasting, Siyam. Like I said, Siyam is an act of worship, one of the major acts of worship. As a matter of fact, Allah has said, well, it's the only act of worship Allah has said, it says, it's for me, for Allah, and He will reward us for it. Allah, Allah, you, you imagine that Allah has said, would give you a small reward, but He says, this is for me, I will reward you for it. Obviously not. That means it's something, the reward is very special. Siyam, the reward for Siyam fasting is very special. That's number one. Number two, in Ramadan, something happens in Ramadan that we believe in. We don't see what we believe because the Prophet ﷺ told us about it. At the beginning of Ramadan, all the devils are chained. Correct? All the devils are chained. What does that mean? That means sin goes down. And this The devils are chained, and the fact that you are fasting, fasting from what? Fasting from eating and drinking only? Obviously not. Fasting from temptations, fasting from sin, fasting from anything that would displease Allah. That's number one. And number two, fasting from temptations. You cannot come, you cannot be with your wife intimately, you don't eat, you don't drink. So, Even psychologically and physiologically, you are weak. You are weak. Your nafs is, is more humble, correct? More modest. And we all feel that. I'm sure we all fasted and we all know. When you're fasting, you're weaker. You don't want to do many things. And you don't want to do sin. You don't want to do anything that displeases Allah. So you'll be righteous. Another thing that happens in Ramadan, Allah Azzawajal, or the Prophet والسلام, says in Ramadan, every day of Ramadan, there are people who Allah gives mercy on, He doesn't, He takes them out of the hellfire. So they are sinners, they are they are doing the, the deeds of, of, of the people of the hellfire, Allah Azzawajal gives them mercy. Every night. These are opportunities for us, correct? So we be, so we are under Allah's mercy. Now, in this month also, you have to understand one thing. It's a month of mercy, but mercy, mercy is not given to you without any deeds. It's not given to you without you going and earning it. We have to earn this mercy. That's why there is Jannah and Naam, correct? We're not sheep. We have 
choice. We have choice. You either do good or you either do bad. So this mercy, Allah has given to us, He has punished, covers everything. However, it's for the people who earn it, for the believers, for the people who choose the way of Allah, the path of Allah, and not for the people who stray away from Allah and disobey Allah. This is something we have to understand. The, the, the reason why this is also a, a, a month of, of mercy is that we are worshipping Allah more. Like I just mentioned to you, we're praying, we're fasting. What else are we doing? We're doing a lot of du'a. What else are we doing? We're reading Quran. What else are we doing? These are all worships. Du'a, reading Quran, Qiyam al Siyam. People do charity more. So what happens is the concept of this month is that you gather all the acts of worship. Everything that Allah wants you to do and pleases, it pleases Allah, you do. Why? Because you want to be under the mercy of Allah. Yes, it's a bit hard. You're hungry, you're tired, you're praying at night, you're fasting in the day, you're reading Quran. All these things may be hard on, on, on the nest, on yourself. But why are you doing it? Because it's an opportunity for you. Because in this month, like I said, every night, there'll be people who are excused from the hellfire. They'll be under the mercy of Allah. Remember the concept of Black Friday? Why do people go to these shops and there's so many people and they're fighting and they're pulling it? Because it's an opportunity. They're going to get something that it costs 100, you, you get it for 20 dollars. Same thing in, in the Holy Month of Ramadan. You're going to do deeds that Allah will double the reward, multiply the rewards for you. And that is why this is a, a month of worship, a month of, of mercy. And it is a month that the Muslim should try very, very hard to change. We all have sins and we're all weak and we all must develop ourselves. Is anybody perfect here? I don't think so. Nobody's perfect. Everybody has a weakness. Everybody has done sin. And so this month, the devils are changing. You're doing a lot of worship. You're obeying a lot. This is the perfect time for you to develop as a Muslim, to get better. If you are doing some, some sin that you know of, this is a good time that you leave it. That you leave it for Allah. And this is a good time to develop other acts of worship. For example, maybe some of us because of work, because of, of hardship, because of, of timing, you don't come to the masjid that you do. In your normal, throughout the year, I mean. In this month, it's good opportunity that you come to the masjid every day, every day. So it becomes what? A habit. So after Ramadan, what happens? That habit carries on. Ramadan is just like a station. You put on your fuel of Iman, goes up. So it stays with you until next Ramadan. So all these acts of worship that you do in Ramadan, you sustain, you keep them with you after Ramadan. Now some of the points I'd like to also mention, away from also the, the mercy of Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal likes you as a Muslim to also mimic some of the attributes of Allah. Allah is merciful, correct? And we are, we want the mercy of Allah. Allah also wants you to be merciful. Wants you to have mercy on others, on your brothers, on your sisters, on anybody who you're dealing with in your life. And this month is also a good opportunity to show that mercy and to de develop that mercy in you. Number one 
is your mercy with your relatives, your mom, your father, your husband, your wife, your daughters, your sons. You need to get closer to them. This is a good opportunity. I'm sure that many of us here who cooks iftar and others who our wives, our sisters, our daughters, and you know, maybe our, our mothers. May Allah preserve them all. Give, be grateful to them. They're working hours in the kitchen to feed you. Have mercy on them and appreciate what they're doing. That is also a mercy that Allah loves and likes and wants you to do. Have mercy on the people you're dealing with at work. If you want help, help your brothers, help your sisters, help anybody who your colleagues who are at work, outside work. You're dealing with a grocery store man, you're dealing with the main shop that you're going with. Maybe some people, they ask for financial help or so. Have mercy. Remember the mercy of Allah, how you want the mercy of Allah? Make it reflect it on yourself on others. Now, just a small point. As you know, it's, it's a policy and a rule in this country that the people who, who go around begging, that is not allowed. Why is it not allowed? It's logical. It's not that we don't want to help these people. No, no, we help these people. But there are Official organizations to help. One of them is the Bill, the Islamic Charity. There's all these, there's many, many of them that help these people. So whenever you see somebody who's coming and begging on the streets, tell them there are organizations there that can help you. Just do not make these two points. I said help, me, help people who on the streets or so. Now, also in Ramadan, it's a good opportunity to get to know your relatives. And it's, it's really a loss and a shame that people in Ramadan, when they eat or when they do their iftar, they're always alone in silence, maybe in his room, in his, uh, with his friends. What about your family? What about your brother? What about your mom? What about your dad? This is a very good opportunity to come together. Salatul Rahim in Islam is a major thing. So the, 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 the relationship between you and your relatives, your mother, your father, and everybody else. So this is a very good opportunity that you build that relationship. And of course, charity. Give charity and make the mercy of Allah spread on your hands. You know how many people don't even have food to eat? So many. So, and it is so easy to access you giving these people is so simple and so easy it's from a button on your phone you can set down on these applications and just give charity feed people that are needy and hungry that's how simple it is it is indeed huh? like I said a month of mercy and we have to play a part in this mercy feed these people because many of them are fasting just like you and me, but at the time of iftar, maybe they don't have even a couple of days to eat, and that's it. SubhanAllah, I know many of us today here, when we have iftar, we have all the food that we can think of. Colors of, of food. So always think about your brothers. Think about your brothers. And last but not least, Brothers, Prophet Ayyad Salaam said, shame, shame on a Muslim that witnesses Ramadan and doesn't go or does, is not under the mercy of Allah. That means this opportunity, if you lose it, shame on you. You don't know what you're doing. So, my, my, my advice to everybody and also to myself, that this is a month that you don't let go of this opportunity. It is a life opportunity. The companion 
Ramadan is to get ready to, to offer Ramadan, to get ready for Ramadan six months before. Six months before they're preparing for Ramadan. Because they know this opportunity might never come back. You don't know. Do you know when you're going to live? Maybe if you come out of this masjid today, and that's it, our life ends. So this opportunity never let go. A Muslim is an opportunity. Every opportunity gets, takes.